Good evening, everybody. It is November 9th, 2023, 7.30 p.m. This is the um, mayor and council meeting in the borough of Allendale. Linda, will you please read the Open Public Meetings Act and call the meeting to order. In compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, the notice requirements have been satisfied. The meeting dates for the year are confirmed at the annual meeting, are posted on the public bulletin board in the municipal building and on the borough website, published in the record within the first 10 days of the new year, and copies are sent to the Ridgewood News and Star Ledger. Notice of this meeting by the October 25th, 2023 Sunshine Notice was sent to the record, the Ridgewood News and Star Ledger, and has been posted on the public bulletin board in the municipal building and borough website. Councilwoman Homan? Here. Councilwoman Levasolo? Here. Councilman O'Connell? Here. Councilman O'Toole? Here. Councilman Yaccarino? Here. Councilman Deloisio? Here. Mayor Wozinski? Here. Please stand, salute the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, next we have the approval of minutes. Do I have a motion to approve October 26th combined work and regular session? So moved. Second, please. Second. Councilwoman Homan? Yes. Councilwoman Lovisolo? Yes. Councilman O'Connell? Yes. Councilman O'Toole? Yes. Councilman Yaccarino? Yes. Councilman Delavisio? Yes. All right, now we're going to have agenda review. We have introduction of two ordinances, ordinance 23-17 and 23-18. These are both cleaning up some of our ordinances and cleaning up the names to make everything consistent. Um, they're more of a, of a housekeeping type of uh, uh, ordinance. And then we have our consent agenda. Uh, Mike, did you want to talk about the um, Allendale Police Department? Defense Logistics Agency. Oh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the federal government allows local law enforcement agencies to acquire various items such as unused or gently used office furniture, electronic equipment, generator, non-military vehicles, tools, medical equipment, et cetera. Uh, this ordinance will allow us to continue our participation in this program. Excellent. Uh, we also have a resolution approving execution of an MOA uh, with our PBA over some mis- uh, communication um, in the PBA contract, and that's all settled. And we have our bill list that I went through. Suzanne, did you go through that? Indeed. You do? Yep, I did. All righty. And um, then we have our firefighter uh, authorization to go for a grant. And that is our agenda review. So next, I'd like to open it up for public comment on agenda items only. Not seeing any, I'm going to bring it back. And first, I'd like to introduce Ordinance 23-17. This is an ordinance for first reading and setting December 7th, 7.30 um, p.m. for the public hearing. Linda, will you please read the ordinance? Ordinance 23-17, an ordinance to amend, supplement, and revise the Code of the Borough of Allendale, Officers, Employees, Chapter 53. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Councilwoman Homan? Yes. Councilwoman Livasolo? Yes. Councilman O'Connell? Yes. Councilman O'Toole? Yes. Councilman Yaccarino? Yes. Councilman Deloisio? Yes. Okay, next ordinance 23-18. Again, this is also first reading and the public hearing is set for December 7th, 7.30 p.m. Linda, please read ordinance 23-18. Ordinance 23-18. An ordinance to amend, supplement, and revise the Code of the Borough of Allendale Officers and Employees, Chapter 53. The hearing date for Ordinance 23-18 is December 7, 2023, at 7.30 p.m. or soon thereafter in the Council Chambers of the Allendale Municipal Building. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Homan? Yes. Councilwoman Levasolo? Yes. Councilman O'Connell? Yes. Councilman O'Toole? Yes. Councilman Yaccarino? Yes. Councilman Deloisio? Yes. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Homan. Second, Levasolo. Roll call. Councilwoman Homan? Yes. Councilwoman Levasolo? Yes. Councilman O'Connell? Yes. Councilman O'Toole? Yes. Councilman Yaccarino? Yes. Councilman Deloisio? <coughs> I wanted to abstain on 23-242. Please, thank you. 
All right. Next council reports, Councilman um, Ed O'Connell. Do you have a council report? Uh, yes, real quick. I just wanted to thank everybody for uh, the mayor council and the Republican club for doing everything they could for the election and uh, my running mate, Joe. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody that came out and uh, supported us. Uh, as far as uh, DPW, uh, you saw the uh, report from Ron. Uh, looks like uh, DPW will be able to do some transfers later this month to fill in the gaps in other areas. And we are going to have uh, our recycling center open. Uh, the last day will be the last Sunday in December to get everything in. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. All right. Councilman Delicio. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I want to second uh, Ed's, Ed's thank you. Um, it's This was my first time running for a public election and a very humbling experience. Uh, this past year being appointed to fill the seat has been, you know, an honor. And I want to thank the people down there who voted for Ed and myself and entrusting us. And I can just, all I can say is, I'm going to give everything I have to continue to help this community be the best and wonderful place that it is. And I really, really do care about this community. So I want to thank everybody for supporting me. Well, uh, thank you. You've already done so much in the short time you've been here. So we appreciate you. Well, thank you for that. That's, that's the reason I'm here, right? You gotta work. Um, so the land use committee met this morning. Uh, we had a relatively short meeting with a very short agenda. Uh, one item that I want to mention to the public, so the holiday observers and uh, Vico Sanchez, who's one of our holiday observer members, uh, we're going to start some repairs, very needed repairs on the grandstand facility. Uh, for years, the holiday observers used the grandstand to store materials. Uh, there's been a lot of leaks and water issues with the grandstand. So uh, with money raised, the holiday observers, we're going to do some voluntary repairs starting tomorrow. Uh, we're going to redo the seats and some of the items on the sides to enhance the structure. So just to let everybody know that. Uh, wonderful. One of the items we discussed this morning was a, a new ordinance to to our code to allow for and, and put language in place for people who are requiring handicap ramps on their homes or loved ones or relatives. So we're working on that. We'll tweak that. We should have something for next meeting. Uh, we did start the project uh, at Crescent Place that was mentioned in our last meeting. Uh, half the project was completed. The road work with the asphalt paving is completed. It looks very, very nice. I'm glad they got that done so quickly before the asphalt plant shut around November. And then there's a little bit more grading work that still needs to be done on the out to enhance the drainage. And that should be scheduled in the next couple of weeks and get that complete. And one smaller item, our borough engineer, Mike Breland, is also reviewing some of our language in our variance package to try to make things a little bit easier for our residents who are coming for very minor tweaks to their variance in mm -hmm. their homes. Yeah. So he's looking at that. Excellent. And that's that's pretty much it. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Councilman Um, I just want to also congratulate Councilman uh, DeLuisio and O'Connell on their victory. Um, good great to serve with you guys um you're very hard working and so i really appreciate being your second on land use Thank you. um it's been it's been fun even this morning was fun um even even <laughs> it's 7 30. um and i also want to congratulate our uh director of operations ron kistner on his win as the new mayor of hasbro Heights. Mm -hmm. um so uh we've been really busy with hr and admin um and hopefully the December meeting, I'll have a, a big report. Um, I do try and at least report out once a month on what's going on with our library. I am um, on the board along with the mayor. Um, so I'm just going to give a very quick update from um, our library director, Nancy Claus. Um, in November, the library is celebrating the November <laughs> in the children's area. Activities include a Dino Rama craft on the 14th, a dinosaur dig activity on November 28th, uh, 20th, a Dino extravaganza story time on the 21st, and a DIY Dino egg program on November 27th. In addition to a regular story times and read to a therapy dog programs, they have a very special Diwali celebration planned for November 13th. 
And then in our adult and family programs, um, there is a brush painting program on November 14th and an author talk and book signing featuring Dr. Jolene Araz, a local psychologist. Dr. Jolene will be discussing her book, Why on Earth Do I Feel This Way? I'm thinking maybe I should go to that one. <laughs> um, our adult take and make craft this month features a recipe and materials to make breadsticks to serve or to give as a gift for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. As always, a complete list of all the programs are on the library website. And that is it. Thank you. Councilwoman Hellman. Hi. Uh, first of all, Hi, yes, Liz. congratulations, Ed. Congratulations, Joe. Joe, I know you've worked alongside Amy on on uh, two ten, two ten, two ten, and have been just an unbelievable uh, partner. So thank, thank you, you so much for wanting to do so much work. It's well appreciated by by not only us on the council but the borough of Allendale. So thanks and welcome back to both of you. Um, as far as water and sewer. Um, I really continue to be pleased with the work that Veolia is doing in Allendale. Uh, temporary treatment vessels were delivered on November 1st, as opposed to Halloween, on November 1st to the West Crescent Well. And you'll see they're building a little shed type area to um, begin to have that temporary treatment put in place. And they hope that it will actually be in place uh, by the end of this year. So that would be uh, phenomenal. It's great news for every resident. PFAS is something that we've definitely been um, con very concerned about. And this is a great step forward. And they're working towards getting the approvals for the permanent facility, which yeah. will eventually be down um, somewhere around in New Street area. Uh, then additionally, there's legislation that's out there that people may or may not be aware of called the lead and copper rule. And the lead and copper rule requires that a water system be able to identify all of the makeup of the service lines to every home. And when we owned the system, that was a very daunting task to think. And it was like a certain percentage, but we had like 1800 unknown lines. And Ron Kistner and the rest of the Allendale team has coordinated with PSE&G. And while those roads were being dug up for PSE&G to replace the miles of gas piping, which is also an advantage to Allendale residents, um, they did the test pits, which need to be done to look at what the makeup is of that service line. And if there is a galvanized or lead line found, Veolia will ha have that actually changed out. So um, they've done 300 in combination with what PSE&G has been doing. There still will probably be another thousand residents that need to have a test pit dug. So I guess what I'd be asking residents is, and also our chief of police saying thank you for being patient with the coordination that sometimes obviously that takes up some street space, but it's a program that is really in place to protect residents, not only here in Allendale, but throughout the state of New Jersey. And uh, as far as the sewers go, we're still working on some details with contracts with both Saddle River. We have a meeting tomorrow morning and um, with Ramsey. So hopefully I'll have some finality to those contracts being updated. Yeah. My goal was by the end of the year. And I am determined to at least get 50% done. Yes. <laughs> Good. So that's it. Thanks. Sarah Wilson. Thanks. Um, okay. Thank you all. Thank you very yeah. much. Uh, first, congratulations to Ed, Joe, and Ron on their victories the other day. Um, in fact, on Tuesday, the Public Safety Committee met. Uh, we discussed our plans to keep everyone safe during the upcoming holiday walk, which is going to be, I think, the first. December 2nd. December 2nd. Um, and we had a minor issue with the new speed sign on McIntyre. It has to do with the, uh, you know, the solar panels. So that's all being addressed. Uh, various roadway striping will be completed next week, including Coach, Franklin Turnpike, and Chestnut Street. Um, okay. <laughs> that, <laughs> uh, the fire and police departments are preparing yet next year's budgets to present to the Finance Committee. Uh, and the on our consent agenda was the uh, resolution for a grant for the fire department to um, apply for the grant to purchase a special washer and dryer for their turnout gear, which, 
wash and dryer for Turnac gear is about thirty-five thousand dollars. So they, don't have them at Home Depot. they do not have them at Home Depot. <laughs> and uh, just yesterday, Chief Dell and I participated in a meeting with a company that makes flood abatement equipment to see if any of their products could help with some of the flooding issues that we've seen in town. So mm -hmm. uh, more on that in the future. Great. That's all I got. Great. Thank you very much. Thank Councilman you. Yacarino. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we had a couple of, well, first of all, I wanted to mention congratulations, of course, to Ed and Joe. It's a pleasure to serve with both of you. And also, we know that Ron is not here this evening, um, but of course, congratulations to him. Um, this week, we started uh, from the committee's purview with an ASA meeting in the conference room. Uh, we discussed a number of things with regard to field maintenance, um, the weather events that we've been having, and the lasting effects that have been left from the fields. Um, we're also going to be following up with Ron with regard to winter preparations, whether we'll be using any turf blankets, considering the condition of such. Um, and then also, as Ron is retiring, we're also going to be scheduling a special ASA meeting in January to meet with the new director of operations, whoever that may be. Um, so that way we're going into the spring season, off to a strong start, and everybody's on the same page with regard to fields. Wednesday morning, we had a facilities committee with myself, Councilman Dalicio, and Mayor Wilsinski. We discussed a number of our open projects as well as different policies that we may be looking to put in place for different uh, room uses within Borough Hall. Um, in addition, like I said, we followed up on matters discussed at the ASA meeting with regards to fields and weather conditions and so forth. Um, and then with regard to some of our open projects, I did follow up with the contractor with regard to the concession stand. Um, we are on target to have more news regarding that in December once the contract is officially awarded, once the funds are able to be encumbered. Um, finally, with regard to the kitchen and the flooring, there's been progress that's been continually been made, um, but I'm following up with the third contractor with regard to finalizing the quote for that. And I did speak with another flooring vendor today so that we are on track to finish that up very soon. Great. That's great. All right. Thank you. Some staff reports. Our clerk, Linda. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mayor. Um, election day went well. Thank you to the board workers, John Gill, Amanda Richards, Hello, Kim Oliveri and the Allendale Police Department. I also want to thank the super board workers, Joseph Brennan, Ali Zambrada, and Bruce Davis. They were amazing, and I asked if they would come back for the primary. The next mayor and council meeting is December 7th, and I also want to congratulate uh, Ed, Joe, and Ron. All right, thank you. Chief Dillon? Oh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, working with Perry Police Department on the shared service possibilities. Uh, working a few enforcement initiatives around town and uh, collaborating with the Alva School District on school safety and security. I'd like to recognize mm -hmm. Superintendent Dr. Barton Cohn, who has been a steadfast partner in ensuring the safety of one of our most vulnerable, vulnerable populations, our children. Excellent. Thank you very much. Our attorney Ray West. Thank you, Mayor. Joe, Ed, and Ron and Absencia, obviously, congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. It's well deserved, and I look forward to working with you. Um, just a brief report is uh, we're working uh, over the last two weeks uh, on some personnel matters. Uh, our new administrative officer is uh, certainly very, very diligent, a great, a great choice, and she hasn't hesitated to to call up when she's grappling with something in the first instance and asking, Excellent. you know, asking the questions. And uh, you know, we've been working together, I think, very well. Chief and I have had a couple of personnel matters to deal with as well. Uh, most of the time has been on the matters that Councilman Holman is referring. To, uh, we spent about an hour today on the phone with uh, Veolia and their attorneys, uh, mostly focused again on easements and encroachments. Um, little by little, we're getting those in place. We are hopeful that we will have the uh, appraisal of the easements uh, done a week from Monday. We were given a 30 day estimate. I think Monday is 21 days. So, uh, you know, we're getting there. Once we have that, then we can proceed with Green Acres. I, I, I think we'll get all the other pieces or I shouldn't put a timeline on it, but most of the other pieces in place by the end of the year and, and the lingering one, which is not a small one, mm -hmm. is going to be, you know, Green Acres. Mm -hmm. And that obviously require some further discussion with the governing body in terms of how to ultimately address the uh, the Green Acres issue. And as Councilwoman Holman said, uh, tomorrow morning, uh, we're meeting with uh, Saddle River on uh, their sewer agreement. So we've spent a little bit of time going back and forth with Saddle River. Uh, they have a developer who is, uh, I guess, leading to the need to hook up to our sewers um, as part of their fair share housing obligation. So uh, I anticipate an interesting discussion tomorrow morning. As soon as I can. Thank you, Mayor. 
All right, and I'll just give my report real quickly. Um, as Councilwoman Lovasella mentioned, there's been just lots of activity going on with all the departments. So we are changing the organizational design of the borough. We're changing positions around a little bit. It's all for the better, all for to better serve the residents, streamlining things better, trying to get everything up and automated as possible. We um, currently are now are accepting credit cards um, for our dog licenses, as I think we mentioned. Things like that um, we're looking to do. Also cleaning up a lot of our files. There's a lot of filing cabinets in there. We're going to streamline all that to make the um, office a nice place for our employees to work as well as residents to visit. So 210 West Crescent, our community center. Um, it's lots of activity, about a million emails in the past couple of days. So that's really uh, getting kicked off. I look forward to seeing that built. I will be posting on Facebook. I'm gonna to try to take a picture of like the same spot so we can kind of see the timeline going forward. I have a feeling it's gonna be done very, very quickly. So we're looking potentially, you know, this summer to be able to do a ribbon cutting. Um, thank you to all the residents um, for all of the traffic detours. Um, we know it's challenging, but as Councilwoman Homan mentioned, it is so important. All these upgrades are very, very important and it would be 10 times worse if we didn't have to go through this. So we really appreciate um, the patients from the residents, and also the due diligence of our police department. Um, it is not easy because things change constantly. They get told one thing and then something else happens and something else happens. So they've been actually on top of it and doing a super great job. Honestly, very, very few complaints and it's usually the same people. So um, I just wanted to uh, thank the staff for all the work they did on election day. That was a big, long day. Um, and also all the work you did in the food drive. That was super. Um, it was a food drive that they all started and um, got a lot of food for the, the food bank, which is always in need at this time of year. Um, correction, the holiday walk is Friday, December 1st, not the 2nd. And um, I did want to mention that Veterans Day is this November 11th. This day honors all our military veterans. Um, it's always on the 11th hour, on the 11th day, and the 11th month. So um, our veterans now, um, unfortunately, um, we've merged with, with Ramsey, so they will be having the ceremony. We may not be having our ceremony this year, but I did want to just mention that, um, that Veterans Day is November 11th to remember that. And congratulations, of course, to our two councilmen who will be serving for another three years. Thank you very much. And also, of course, to our director of operations, who is now going to be the new mayor of Hasbrook Heights. And that's, I think, is it for me. So now, next, I would uh, like to ask if there's any unfinished business, any new business. Now, um, I ask if anybody from the public would like to come and speak on any matter. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Joe Gabuno. I live at 62 Chestnut Street. Three minutes. Remember three minutes. Yes, three minutes. Okay. Um, I want to, um, I didn't want to take anybody else's time, but it's, I'll take the three minutes. Um, I'm in search of, uh, well, first of all, thank you for the striping uh, issue being taken care of. You are the people that we have to go to because um, you get things done. Uh, same thing with the uh, foliage that was cut on uh, Chestnut Street and also on Crescent, and which has helped uh, people um, navigate the street. So here I need to talk to you. I need one person on the council or maybe or more to be an advocate for Chestnut Street rather than an adversary. Um, the traffic island, and I brought up the, the reason for safety of the traffic island. Allendale already has a traffic island where the, the clock is in the center of town and Curly Shaw's uh, uh, plaque. And that, that island was there not just for decoration, but that island is there because it's going to route the traffic around that the center of town and make it safe. That's what we need at Chestnut Street. <coughs> um, Chestnut Street is the opening between Ches uh, Chestnut Street and Franklin Turnpike is two and a half times the width of the entrance to Orchard Street going east on Orchard Street before the police department and the reason I bring that up is because the excuse that was used, why there isn't an, an island, is because of the snow plow. So uh, just recently, the Waldwick uh, Department, DPW, had their orange or yellow uh, leaf plow that had to go up Chestnut Street, then turn right and go down through uh, um, Franklin Turnpike, south towards Waldwick. 
So that plow is a perfect example of size. So a snow plow is not the excuse that should be used for not having an island on um, at Chestnut Street and Franklin Turnpike. Um, I have a picture. I, I took a picture of a, an example of an island that existed in another town. Yes. I don't understand why is the what was the example I'm trying to like visualize I'm what sorry. you're talking about tell me what was the example of the truck the truck is a DPW truck right we don't First, have an island now though we don't have an island right so he didn't so have to he does, obstruct an correct. island it was the, the space was wide enough for because that. we don't have an island <laughs> well it's before the yellow there is a there's a triangle of there's a form of a triangle of striping that's at Chestnut Street and Franklin Turnpike. It's, it's orange. It's the only striping that's on that south of, of uh, Franklin Turnpike. That truck was able to go to the right and what did not come anywhere near the, the, the striping that's, that exists here. But maybe just this, maybe you have to take a trip down there, you know, take a look at what, what, what I'm talking about. Um, but I found an island and I'd like to share it with a picture with, with anyone that's willing to take a look at it, that it doesn't even have to be this this large. But if someone wants to put, I don't know how to do this, but put it on someone's phone, but here's an, an island that is already at an area of Ridgewood by the duck pond. And it's a perfect example of what's needed. And it's not a major expense. We're not talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, it's, it's, it's just uh, cement. And instead of having dirt there, you could have... Uh, you know, have stones there so that people going from one part of Franklin Turnpike to the other part of Franklin Turnpike crossing Chestnut Street can stop. But at the same time, you're protecting about the traffic. The traffic that turns going north from on Franklin Turnpike and turns left on Chestnut Street, they are actually on the other side. They are on the exit side of Chestnut Street. So, Mr. W, you know, the, the county engineer, the borough engineer, the county safety inspector, they've all looked at that intersection. They've all examined it many, many times. You've come to us many, many times regarding the same thing. It was decided by the experts that there will not be an island. It's not just just because of the snow plowing issue. That's an issue, but oh, it's an ancillary issue. It's not necessary for safety, according to them. It's been looked at already. We're going to put stripes there. And I have to rely on the experts. You're no, not a traffic understand. expert. I'm not a traffic expert. So that's was, why we have all these traffic experts. I didn't experts, know that, they, that, that you that, had any kind of... I that, asked yeah, for, I'm reading emails going back from when you brought this up, you know, m many times. So I, I just, you know, I appreciate that you want it to be safe there. We, we oh, Safety is always our utmost important, but we have uh, it, we have consulted with our experts and we, we're, we're going to put a striped, um, a striped, Safety, area. safety We're going to and it's all it's going to be refreshed with there and it's also going to have some reflective uh paint on glass beads, oh, okay. glass beads on well, it i'm that's very happy to hear that yeah that's very nice and yeah. i just i'm my only concern is russian roulette that they so, are these people let me let me finish i don't want i'm not arguing with you i i appreciate what you've done my my concern is that if i'm the only one that's been concerned about this from the people that live on the street, so to speak. I wish I had known about any kind of meetings that were going on so I could at least sit or maybe I could be privy to what the experts say about the street. You know, I, I just didn't know anything about that. But I'm saying that this, I'm saying that they may, they may have their expertise. They may be reluctant. And I think that that's happened when I had to deal with Herndon and I had to deal with Sherb when I tried to go through the, at least the police department at that particular time and or maybe town council members in private meetings, there may be a reluctance to try to put something there that would be more helpful, that may be more helpful than what you have planned. But I have to backtrack and let's wait to see how okay. how I, how I, the I, improvements I, that you're going to do okay. on Chester Street. I'm willing, I'm willing to, to say, okay. well, great. You know, um, I think it's happening next week. Now I just wondered, do you have the plans? Is there are there uh, printout plans it's, of what the striping is going to be? It's it's on? refreshing what is there right now. There's striping there that's that's there right now, and it's going to be refreshed, but it's going to have reflections on it. Are we going to have the the crosswalks for the for the uh, bus? 
drops north no, and I, south. No, I, again. Cross Franklin Turnpike? Cross Franklin Turnpike. Yeah. yeah. Again, we're, we're, no. we're not, no. I mean, this is, no, this is cross something Chester. that our traffic. Oh, just tra yeah, uh, yeah. Is that because it's, because it's only Allendale's responsibility, or is it because the crosswalks are the county responsibility? So if it's a county road, it's the county responsibility, but it's it's um it's not something that we we're not just putting we don't just put crosswalks I understand. you know anywhere it's there's there's patterns that are looked at so again we leave this stuff up to our our experts and the traffic experts so I appreciate that you want one there and and you know well, that's great and but, I, I, and but this that's, is why I'm talking about experts yeah you're this is why you're putting a bad situation from from my perspective okay. If the experts are the ones that did this, they must have been the ones who had all of the traffic patterns done is from, there, is from Orchard question? Street north to Ramsey. All of the crosswalks and everything that was done. Now, who did that? Number one, who did that? Because south of Roof, south of Orchard Street to Waldwick, there are zero. Okay. Well, those that's are why, towns. That's I, why I'm Alabama's here. Alabama is our what we what we're. But about. that's why I'm not. I'm not here to. I'm just saying you might you might want to situation. someone might I'm asking for someone on the council or the police department someone to find out you know who's responsible for putting us in a situation where we're talking about why is it that north of roof uh, north of Orchard Street has 12 and south of Orchard Street has zero okay that's all thank you thank you very much all appreciate right. your time and effort I hope there's an advocate somewhere thank you have a good day all right, anybody else from the public wishing to speak? Not seeing anyone, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second, Holman, aye. <laughs> Sorry. Aye. Aye. Have a good night, everyone.